If you watched my last video on the flute case, you'll know that it went to auction. Unfortunately, there was only one bidder, and so it went for £10. Rather disappointing. One of my granddaughters uh, has decided to enter the world of engineering. And uh, in her final year at college, before going to uni, she's decided for as a project she'd like to build an orrery and make use, of course, of me and the CNC machine. So we looked on the internet and we found this particular one made in wood, but um, with all the necessary information. It's the instructables.com. Everything is there. Dozens of um, photographs, everything that you could want, except for drawings. And unfortunately, there is only this one. However, that's vital information because on there it shows the wheels how they connect with one another, which axles are actually fixed and which are free to rotate. So that's one thing we needed. And the other thing is the list of gears and how many teeth. And really, that's all the information we need. I didn't fancy the idea of drawing out all the gears um, there are 18 of them, um, not in CAD. I bought the gear generator, which is uh, available on the internet. It costs £20. It's uh, quite a simple bit of software, but it does a good job. Uh, I'm not convinced of its complete accuracy, but it, it was good enough for what we're doing. All you have to do is just uh, enter the PCD and the number of teeth and uh, away it goes. And there are one or two problems. Uh, to start with, I haven't got enough Y travel on this setup, so I couldn't do it the size of the original. So we've had to reduce it. And the way it, the sizes of the gears are worked out is by taking the size of the biggest gear and its PCD, multiplying by the number of teeth. So there are 146 teeth in the biggest gear wheel. And I've had to limit the PCD to 150 millimeters. So it's 146 divided by 150 multiplied by the number of teeth and that gives me the PCD for that particular one. Right, having done that, that's fine. This is the setup. At the moment it's a one and a half mil two flute cutter. The main problem with cutting acrylic is that the swarf that comes off will cling to the cutter and rapidly turn into a solid hard rock-like lump and you've lost the cutter in a matter of seconds. So you've got to get rid of the swarf. I don't actually need a coolant, um, so I've got a jet of air which is only about 5 psi. There's nothing sort of high pressure about it. It might help to cool the uh, cutter down a bit, but it does the job. Now at the moment uh, I'm centred and I'm using uh, Mac 3 uh, was set up in VCarve Pro, the cutting paths, um, and entered into the Mac 3 in a text format. So all I've got to do now is to just set it going. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now the RPM is 1200. Feed rate is 100 millimeters a minute. That's the compressor just come on. And the plunge rate is 50. I'd rather it went slowly um, than risk breaking these little tiny cutters. Uh, they're surprisingly difficult to get hold of. I can get plenty of bull-nosed ones, but the actual uh, flat-ended ones are not so easy to get. And they tend to be more expensive. I forgot to mention the depth of cut is 0.7 of a millimetre. That's uh, 28th hour if you're working in inches. The pieces that have been cut out don't uh, come out just in case they jam the cutter and um, would cause it to break and the software allows me to put in some tabs some little tiny connecting pieces to hold them in place and they snap off at the end Now I've set up a test piece here, um, originally when I filmed it somewhere and videoed it, I've somewhere I've lost uh, the original which is a shame and it looks like I haven't got this in the middle and it's going to be going off the edge. But never mind, it demonstrates how it works, oh it's very close. No, it's gone off. Never mind. It illustrate, illustrates the process. And what I will do is I'll, I'll turn off the air and you can see what happens. There's the build up instantly. And that would only take a few seconds to become rock hard. This shows the tabs and uh, how easily they break out. This is a finished uh, gear wheel. Actually it's one that was discarded because the cut hadn't quite gone through and it's left a slight flash on one side. However, you can see the sort of finish that's obtainable. This is the main wheel and as you can see it's been engraved. Um, unfortunately it's one of those uh, videos that seems to have gone astray so I can't show the actual engraving going on. Um, I used a 60 degree cutter uh, working at about 3000 RPM. The same software yeah, VCarve Pro. It's quite easy to do, uh, especially with small pieces. It works very well. 
The problem when it comes to something this size is that it has to be absolutely flat, really flat, because you've only got to be a few thou out in the horizontal and you've got thick engraving at one side and the graving the other side sort of disappears. This isn't too bad an effort. It is slightly uh, thicker one side than the other, but it's good enough, I think. Uh, this shows the quality of the engraving. All the days. These are all the gears for the orrery. We've managed to cut them all. We've had several problems and we've made quite a few prototypes. The idea that uh, the spacing between two gears is the sum of the two pitch circle diameters divided by two uh, didn't altogether work. Most of the time it was accurate uh, but there were one or two uh, where the gears were too tight so we had to do a lot of uh, drilling and, and testing different sizes and so on. Um, eventually we think we've got it all correct. Now the main problem was this big one. The gear um, generator uh, provided with uh, five spokes or as many spokes as you wanted but rather than have spokes we went for a, a different pattern and uh, to get that pattern uh, I had to put it into CAD and when I did so the CAD couldn't find the center there wasn't a centre, so measuring the distances across in various places, I found they were completely different. They're as much as one and a half uh, millimetres out of true. So I ended up by having to draw the uh, whole gear out again in CAD uh, before we cut it. A bit time consuming, but uh, it did the job okay. Now the original uh, drawings were uh, for a wooden, this big wooden job um, and he didn't provide a method of turning the uh, orrery, making it work. He suggested you just push the wheel around, the biggest gear wheel at the bottom with your thumb, uh, which seemed a bit crude. And so we, what we've got is this little motor and gearbox uh, from China. I think it was £2.50, something like that, £3. Um, and it provides uh, 5 RPM on a 3.5 volt supply. So that should do the job nicely. The next problem we have is that the whole thing is on uh, one base and it's, there are three layers all together and the base was too big to cut out on my CNC um, milling machine. It's just that bit bigger. Um, I didn't have enough movement. So what we've done is we've cut this shape and three of these fit together glue together, uh, if I can just show it completely, here we are, um, and that makes the base. And the problem came when we came to glue it together. Well the first glue we tried of course was um, the usual super glue, which did a good job, strong, uh, unfortunately it was messy. Uh, it left deposits um, along the edge uh, which wouldn't scrape off. So we tried, I looked up the commercial ones and on eBay you get this one, Tensile 12. Expensive and a total waste of money. It was weaker than the super glue and it's just as thick and messy. So abandoned that one and then I came up with this one Magic Weld. This is the UK supplier yeah. and this chemical is 
I can just see it on the bottom there. Uh, dichloromethane. Methylene chloride contains dichloromethane. And that's brilliant. What it does is it sort of half dissolves the plastic, uh, makes it soft. And when you press the two together, they, the uh, adhesive, whatever you want to call it, evaporates and the two lots of plastic harden and join together and become more of a weld. And that is extremely good, works very well. Now the holes in our test piece and in our prototype were drilled on a drill press. But the holes um, we're going to do in the final version are going to be cut in the, with the CNC. The smallest hole is 2.6 millimeter diameter for tapping with the M3 uh, taps. Being 2.6, I can use a 2.5 millimeter cutter to, to cut them out. So we've got to cut nine of these to make the three layers. And that's the next job.